Hello and welcome back to .NET Nuke Module Development. I'm your instructor Scott Wilkinson and this is part four and the final part of our module development series in .NET Nuke and this video will be discussing data caching. In the previous videos we've built an entire Hello World straw man module complete with a view, an edit, and a settings controls. Um, and our architecture was pretty good. It's a three-tier architecture where we used a uh, entity framework uh, data layer and a business layer, the feature controller that uh, that controlled the data layer, and then uh, our presentation layer used the controller to uh, update and and get the the hello world message. But my problem with it is, is every time a user uh, hits our view, if you remember in our, our coding, uh, it's going to hit our data layer to get that hello world message. Uh, and that's a lot of database hits. And so what I want to do is minimize that by introducing data caching and how we will do it in our .NET Nuke module. So to illustrate how we do caching in our .NET Nuke module, I'm going to turn back to our feature controller, which is under the components and uh, feature controller class in the module example. Uh, I've already made some uh, some edits to the code, so they're a little bit subtle, but I'll explain what they are. So first of all, I've created a new private method, and what this does is it returns a unique string, which is our which is going to be our caching key uh, for doing our our caching. A good rule of thumb here is to have this thing build a, a string that will be unique uh, for that module in anybody's .NET Nuke instance. So what I did was I picked a company name, modules, uh, the name of our module, and then the module ID. I feel like that will be pretty unique. And then um, in the get module example method, what I did here was, if you remember before, this was pretty much our code right here, which is just to grab the message from the database. I've made a little bit of change here in that I'm first um, I'm going to attempt to get it from the cache based on that module ID, and then only if that's null, then I get it from the database, which is a common way you, you do caching in .NET. But instead of using the application cache that's built into .NET, I'm using the one that's in the .NET Nuke core API. You always want to use the core API because if .NET Nuke ever makes that better, then your module just automatically becomes better. So it's in .NET Nuke.common.utilities.datacache, and the function is called getCache, and I want it to return my, a string, which is my cache object. And I'm passing in, of course, uh, a, a unique key, which I'm using my function to generate. And then when I, um, after I realize that I don't have anything in the cache, I'm going to get the, uh, the string from the database. Once I get the string, that's when I want to set it in the cache. And um, I'm using a, ex the same namespace again, but I'm using a function called setCache. Alternatively, when we do an update, we will update the cache as well. So our code remains virtually the same with regard to updating the, the, the message. But then I will use the data caching to first remove it from the cache and then to reset it in the cache, thereby updating the cache. So let's see this in action. To test our caching, I've set up a few breakpoints in the code in both of our methods, and now I'm going to go ahead and debug. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, is look at the view by refreshing. Now I hit my breakpoint, and I'm going to attempt to get the, the cached string and we'll see that it does, it gives me a the message hello world test. So that apparently is already in the cache. I must have run this previously. So therefore, because it's in the cache, I don't need to uh, get pull it out of the database. 
So that saves us some bandwidth here. Now let's look at the update. I'm going to go on the edit. And, okay, it's going to hit this again because my edit's going to pull the message. And now I'll, I'll add the word cached to the end of that and hit update. So we'll go in here and we'll see. Now we're saving the changes to the database, but now what we're going to have to do is remove it from the cache and reset that new value in the cache. And then when, now that we're hitting, we're hitting the get module example, now that we're going back to the view, so now we'll see that the message is the new cached. It's, it's the new message and it's cached. And there we are. Well, that wraps up our series on .NET Nuke module development. I hope you've learned a lot. Be looking for my next video series, which will cover some of the advanced topics, such as the MVP pattern, test-driven development, and a deeper dive into the .NET Nuke API. So until then, thanks for watching.